8월 21일 쉬운 영어로 맥체인 성경통독 오늘 말씀은 사무엘상 13장 로마서 11장 예레미야 50장 10편 28편 29편 말씀입니다. 아가스 21. 1st Samuel chapter 13. Saul was 30 years old when he became king. He ruled over Israel for 42 years. Saul chose 3,000 of Israel's men. 2,000 of them were with him at Michmash and in the hill country of Bethel. 1,000 were with Jonathan at Gibeah in the land of Benjamin. Saul sent the rest back to their homes. Some Philistine soldiers were stationed at Geba. Jonathan attacked them. The other Philistines heard about it. Saul announced, let the Hebrew people hear about what has happened. He had trumpets blown all through the land. So all the Israelites heard the news. They were told, Saul has attacked the Philistine army camp at Geba. Now the Philistines can't stand the Israelites. The Israelites were called out to join Saul at Gilgal. The Philistines gathered together to fight against Israel. They had 3,000 chariots and 6,000 chariot drivers. Their soldiers were as many as the grains of sand on the seashore. They went up and camped at Michmash. It was east of Beth Avayan. The Israelites saw that their army was in deep trouble. So they hid in caves. They hid among bushes and rocks. They also hid in pits and empty wells. Some of them even went across the Jordan River. They went to the lands of Gad and Gilead. Saul remained at Gilgal. All the troops with him were shaking with fear. He waited seven days, just as Samuel had told him to. But Samuel didn't come to Gilgal. And Saul's men began to scatter. So he said, bring me the burnt offering and the friendship offerings. Then he offered up the burnt offering. Just as Saul finished offering the sacrifice, Samuel arrived. Saul went out to greet him. What have you done? asked Samuel. Saul replied, I saw that the men were scattering. I saw that the Philistines were gathering together at Michmash. You didn't come when you said you would. So I thought, now the Philistines will come down to attack me at Gilgal. And I haven't asked the Lord for his blessing. So I felt I had to sacrifice the burnt offering. You have done a foolish thing, Samuel said. You haven't obeyed the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have made your kingdom secure over Israel for all time to come. But now your kingdom won't last. The Lord has already looked for a man who is dear to his heart. He has appointed him king of his people. That's because you haven't obeyed the Lord's command. Then Samuel left Gilgal and went up to Gibeah in the land of Benjamin. Saul counted the men who were with him. The total number was about 600. Saul and his son Jonathan were staying in Gibeah in the land of Benjamin. The men who remained in the army were there with them. At the same time, the Philistines camped at Michmash. Three groups of soldiers went out from the Philistine camp to attack Israel. One group turned and went toward Ophrah in the area of Shuel. Another went toward Beth Horon. The third went toward the border that looked out over the valley of Zeboim. That valley faces the desert. There weren't any blacksmiths in the whole land of Israel. That's because the Philistines had said, the Hebrews might hire them to make swords or spears. So all the Israelites had to go down to the Philistines. They had to go to them to get their plows, hoes, axes and sickles sharpened. It cost a fourth of an ounce of silver to sharpen a plow or a hoe. It cost an eighth of an ounce to sharpen a pitchfork or an axe. That's also what it cost to put new tips on the large sticks used to drive oxen. So the Israelite soldiers went out to battle without swords or spears in their hands. That was true for all of Saul's and Jonathan's soldiers. Only Saul and his son Jonathan had those weapons.
A group of Philistine soldiers had gone out to the pass at Michmash. Romans chapter 11. So here is what I ask. Did God turn his back on his people? Not at all. I myself belong to Israel. I am one of Abraham's children. I am from the tribe of Benjamin. God didn't turn his back on his people. After all, he chose them. Don't you know what scripture says about Elijah? He complained to God about Israel. He said, Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have torn down your altars. I'm the only one left. And they are trying to kill me. 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 10, 14, How did God answer him? God said, I have kept 7,000 people for myself. They have not bowed down to Baal. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 18, Some are also faithful today. They have been chosen by God's grace. And if they are chosen by grace, then they can't work for it. If that were true, grace wouldn't be grace anymore. What should we say then? The people of Israel did not receive what they wanted so badly. Those Israelites who were chosen did receive it. But the rest of the people were made stubborn. It is written, God made it hard for them to understand. He gave them eyes that could not see. He gave them ears that could not hear. And they are still like that today. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 4, Isaiah chapter 29 verse 10, David says, Let their feast be a trap and a snare. Let them trip and fall. Let them get what's coming to them. Let their eyes grow dark so they can't see. Let their backs be bent forever. Psalm chapter 69 verses 22, 23, again, here is what I ask. The Israelites didn't trip and fall once and for all time, did they? Not at all. Because Israel sinned, the Gentiles can be saved. That will make Israel jealous of them. Israel's sin brought riches to the world. Their loss brings riches to the Gentiles. So then what greater riches will come when all Israel turns to God? I am talking to you who are not Jews. I am the apostle to the Gentiles. So I take pride in the work I do for God and others. I hope somehow to stir up my own people to want what you have. Perhaps I can save some of them. When they were not accepted, it became possible for the whole world to be brought back to God. So what will happen when they are accepted? It will be like life from the dead. The first handful of dough that is offered is holy. This makes all of the dough holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. Some of the natural branches have been broken off. You are a wild olive branch. But you have been joined to the tree with the other branches. Now you enjoy the life-giving sap of the olive tree root. So don't think you are better than the other branches. Remember, you don't give life to the root. The root gives life to you. You will say, some branches were broken off so that I could be joined to the tree. That's true. But they were broken off because they didn't believe. You stand only because you do believe. So don't be proud, but tremble. God didn't spare the natural branches. He won't spare you either. Think about how kind God is. Also think about how firm he is. He was hard on those who stopped following him. But he is kind to you. So you must continue to live in his kindness. If you don't, you also will be cut off. If the people of Israel do not continue in their unbelief, they will again be joined to the tree. God is able to join them to the tree again. After all, weren't you cut from a wild olive tree? Weren't you joined to an olive tree that was taken care of? And wasn't that the opposite of how things should be done? How much more easily will the natural branches be joined to their own olive tree? Brothers and sisters, here is a mystery I want you to understand. It will keep you from being proud. Part of Israel has refused to obey God. 
That will continue until the full number of Gentiles has entered God's kingdom. In this way all Israel will be saved. It is written, the God who saves will come from Mount Zion. He will remove sin from Jacob's family. Here is my covenant with them. I will take away their sins. Isaiah chapter 59 verses 20, 21, 27 to 9. Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 33, 34. As far as the good news is concerned, the people of Israel are enemies. This is for your good. But as far as God's choice is concerned, the people of Israel are loved. This is because of God's promises to the founders of our nation. God does not take back his gifts. He does not change his mind about those he has chosen. At one time you did not obey God. But now you have received mercy because Israel did not obey. In the same way, Israel has not been obeying God. But now they receive mercy because of God's mercy to you. God has found everyone guilty of not obeying him. So now he can have mercy on everyone. How very rich are God's wisdom and knowledge. How he judges is more than we can understand. The way he deals with people is more than we can know. Who can ever know what the Lord is thinking? Or who can ever give him advice? Isaiah chapter 40 verse 13 has anyone ever given anything to God, so that God has to pay them back? Job chapter 41 verse 11, all things come from him. All things are directed by him. All things are for his praise. May God be given the glory forever. Amen. Jeremiah 50. Here is the message the Lord spoke through Jeremiah the prophet. It was about the city of Babylon and the land of Babylon. He said, Announce this message among the nations. Lift up a banner. Let the nations hear the message. Do not keep anything back. Say, Babylon will be captured. The god named Bel will be put to shame. The god named Marduk will be filled with terror. Babylon's gods will be put to shame. The gods its people made will be filled with terror. A nation from the north will attack it. That nation will destroy Babylon. No one will live there. People and animals alike will run away. The days are coming, announces the Lord. At that time the people of Israel and Judah will gather together. They will come in tears to me. I am the Lord their God. They will ask how to get to Zion. Then they will turn their faces toward it. They will come and join themselves to me. They will enter into the covenant I make with them. It will last forever. It will never be forgotten. My people have been like lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray. They have caused them to wander in the mountains. They have wandered over mountains and hills. They have forgotten that I am their true resting place. Everyone who found them destroyed them. Their enemies said, We aren't guilty. They sinned against the Lord. He gave them everything they needed. He has always been Israel's hope. People of Judah, run away from Babylon. Leave the land of Babylon. Be like the goats that lead the flock. I will stir up great nations that will join forces against Babylon. I will bring them from the land of the north. They will take up their battle positions against Babylon. They will come from the north and capture it. Their arrows will be like skilled soldiers. They will not miss their mark. So the riches of Babylon will be taken away. All those who steal from it will have more than enough, announces the Lord. People of Babylon, you have stolen what belongs to me. That has made you glad and full of joy. You dance around like a young cow on a threshing floor. You neigh like stallions. Because of that, you will bring great shame on your land. Your whole nation will be dishonored. It will become the least important of the nations. It will become a dry and empty desert. Because I am angry with it, no one will live there. It will be completely deserted. 
All those who pass by Babylon will be shocked. They will make fun of it because of all its wounds. All you who shoot arrows, take up your battle positions around Babylon. Shoot at it. Do not spare any arrows. Its people have sinned against me. Shout against them on every side. They are giving up. The towers of the city are falling. Its walls are being pulled down. The Lord is paying back its people. So pay them back yourselves. Do to them what they have done to others. Do not leave anyone in Babylon to plant the fields. Do not leave anyone to harvest the grain. Let each of them return to their own people. Let them run away to their own land. If they don't, their enemy's sword will bring them great harm. Israel is like a scattered flock that lions have chased away. The first lion that ate them up was the king of Assyria. The last one that broke their bones was Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. The Lord who rules over all is the God of Israel. He says, I punished the king of Assyria. In the same way, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land. But I will bring Israel back to their own grasslands. I will feed them on Mount Carmel and in Bashan. I will satisfy their hunger on the hills of Ephraim and Gilead. The days are coming, announces the Lord. At that time people will search for Israel's guilt. But they will not find any. They will search for Judah's sins. But they will not find any. That is because I will forgive the people I have spared. Enemies of Babylon, attack their land of Marathame. Make war against those who live in Pekid. Chase them and kill them. Destroy them completely, announces the Lord. Do everything I have commanded you to do. The noise of battle is heard in the land. It is the noise of a great city being destroyed. It has been broken to pieces. It was the hammer that broke the whole earth. How empty Babylon is among the nations. Babylon, I set a trap for you. And you were caught before you knew it. You were found and captured. That is because you opposed me. I have opened up my storeroom. I have brought out the weapons I use when I am angry. I am the Lord and King who rules over all. I have work to do in the land of the Babylonians. So come against it from far away. Open up its storerooms. Stack everything up like piles of grain. Completely destroy that country. Do not leave anyone alive there. Kill all Babylon's strongest warriors. Let them die in battle. How terrible it will be for them. Their time to be judged has come. Now they will be punished. Listen to those who have escaped. Listen to those who have returned from Babylon. They are announcing in Zion how I have paid Babylon back. I have paid it back for destroying my temple. Send for men armed with bows and arrows. Send them against Babylon. Set up camp all around it. Do not let anyone escape. Pay it back for what its people have done. Do to them what they have done to others. They have dared to disobey me. I am the Holy One of Israel. You can be sure its young men will fall dead in the streets. All its soldiers will be put to death at that time, announces the Lord. Proud Babylonians, I am against you, announces the Lord. The Lord who rules over all says, your day to be judged has come. It is time for you to be punished. You proud people will trip and fall. No one will help you up. I will start a fire in your towns. It will burn up everyone around you. The Lord who rules over all says, the people of Israel are being treated badly. So are the people of Judah. Those who have captured them are holding them. They refuse to let them go. But I am strong and will save them. My name is the Lord who rules over all. I will stand up for them. I will bring peace and rest to their land. But I will bring trouble to those who live in Babylon. A sword is coming against the Babylonians, announces the Lord. It is coming against those who live in Babylon. It is coming against their officials and wise men. 
A sword is coming against their prophets. But they are not really prophets at all. So they will look foolish. A sword is coming against their soldiers. They will be filled with terror. A sword is coming against their horses and chariots. It is coming against all the hired soldiers and their armies. They will become weak. A sword is coming against their treasures. They will be stolen. There will not be any rain for their rivers. So they will dry up. Those things will happen because their land is full of statues of gods. Those gods will go crazy with terror. Desert creatures and hyenas will live in Babylon. And so will owls. People will never live there again. It will not be lived in for all time to come. I destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. I also destroyed the towns that were near them, announces the Lord. Babylon will be just like them. No one will live there. No human beings will stay there. Look. An army is coming from the north. I am stirring up a great nation and many kings. They are coming from a land that is very far away. Their soldiers are armed with bows and spears. They are mean. They do not show any mercy at all. They come riding in on their horses. They sound like the roaring ocean. They are lined up for battle. They are coming to attack you, city of Babylon. The king of Babylon has heard reports about them. His hands can't help him. He is in great pain. It is like the pain of a woman having a baby. I will be like a lion coming up from the bushes by the Jordan River. I will hunt in rich grasslands. I will chase the people of Babylon from their land in an instant. What nation will I choose to do this? Which one will I appoint? Is anyone like me? Who would dare to argue with me? What leader can stand against me? So listen to what the Lord has planned against Babylon. Hear what he has planned against the land of the Babylonians. Their young people will be dragged away. Their grasslands will be shocked at their fate. At the news of Babylon's capture, the earth will shake. The people's cries will be heard among the nations. Psalms 28 to 29. Psalm chapter 28. A Psalm of David. Lord, my rock, I call out to you. Pay attention to me. If you remain silent, I will die. I will be like those who go down into the grave. Hear my cry for your favor when I call out to you for help. Hear me when I lift up my hands in prayer toward your most holy room. Don't drag me away with sinners. Don't drag me away with those who do evil. They speak in a friendly way to their neighbors. But their hearts are full of hate. Pay them back for their evil actions. Pay them back for what their hands have done. Give them exactly what they should get. They don't care about the Lord's mighty acts. They don't care about what his hands have done. So he will tear them down. He will never build them up again. Give praise to the Lord. He has heard my cry for his favor. The Lord gives me strength. He is like a shield that keeps me safe. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart jumps for joy. With my song I praise him. The Lord gives strength to his people. He guards and saves his anointed king. Save your people. Bless those who belong to you. Be their shepherd. Take care of them forever. Psalm chapter 29. A Psalm of David. Praise the Lord, you angels in heaven. Praise the Lord for his glory and strength. Praise the Lord for the glory that belongs to him. Worship the Lord because of his beauty and holiness. The voice of the Lord is heard over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon into pieces. 
He makes the mountains of Lebanon leap like a calf. He makes Mount Hermon jump like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oak trees. It strips the forests bare. And in his temple everyone cries out, Glory! The Lord on his throne rules over the flood. The Lord rules from his throne as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace.